Would you like to say anything more to us? No, I didn't have anything else to say. <laughs> I just wanted to get my microphone working, and okay. I'm glad it worked. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. Lisa Cantrell Smith is in the house. Give a big shout out to her. <laughs> <laughs> praise God, praise God. Okay, my precious wife Jackie just came in. She was on the run today. Bless Jackie. Welcome, sweetheart. All right, praise God. Praise God. I see. Hey, Matt Borland, how you doing? I see Matt's on. I don't hear from him yet. Jackie Fisher, come on in and say hello to us again. Hello, all. How are you tonight? This is Jackie. Praise God. Hello. Hello. I hear you. Praise God. Tyrone Kirkpatrick from New York. Come on in, Tyrone. Say hello to us. Tyron says hello, Dr. Carter and everyone. Let's try you try try that microphone, Tyrone. Okay, we're not getting you, but we know you're there. Praise God. Okay. Brian Whitaker. Hey Brian. Good evening, Dr. Carter. How you doing? Doing fine. Praise the Lord. God bless you, man. Good to see you. God bless you. All right. All right. You. Praise God. Okay. Jackie, before we get started, do you need to identify anybody on the call? Uh, just if they are on the phone. CK. Hey, CK. How you doing, CK? I'm doing great. It's a nice warm day in Texas. Praise God. A nice warm day in Texas. All right. Okay. Been a rainy day in Georgia. A uh, rainy day. But <laughs> praise God. Might be a rainy night in Georgia, but hey, we're here. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> hey, everybody. This is our last class for this course. Hallelujah. And then we can cry. We can. It's sad, too, because we're coming to an end of a beautiful course. And, um, but we've had a great time. We have had a great time. And we thank God as we close out this course with the last class. And um, you all have been wonderful. You've done such a wonderful job in your homework and in your assignments, in your attendance. And so uh, we just want to um, close out. But let's look at, let's go back to lesson 11. want to do a little bit of work with um the book of Revelation. I am not an expert on the book of Revelation, but we just give you what we have, what the Lord revealed to us, and what we wrote about in this book, and um, go through Revelation this way. Praise God. So we just thank God for you. And Father, we just thank you and bless you and honor you and praise you. Um, your homework assignment before we get into the lesson, your homework assignment, there's only one assignment left for most of you because most of you have sent in lesson 11 already. Uh, your homework assignment is to write a two or three page report, a summary rep report of what this class has meant to you, what you've learned, any questions or answers, any questions you might have, any uh, critique, any recommendations, any way that we can improve the course. Um, most people are saying we can improve the, the course by making it longer. But what we did, we tried to condense a full year course into 12 weeks. And um, I see some great results in, in just this 12 week condensation of this great course. And we've learned a lot about the Bible, but now have this workbook go back and review take each book one at a time and this workbook can serve as a resource for you for a long time and so we just thank God we just thank God okay so um, 
Okay. Some of you talk about allergies and all that. Hey, it, it's get get put some prayer on it. Lisa, put some prayer on those allergies. By the way, by the way, um, we have a student who uh, is concerned about continuing next semester because he lost his job. We want to believe, I'm not going to call the student's name, but we want to believe God that God's going to raise up another job for him within the next uh, couple of weeks. And he's going to be right on schedule when we start the new course. So we just believe God. You know, Satan tries to discourage. Yes, Alisa, that's what I said. God give him a better job. Praise God. And, and more finances mm -hmm. and more time with his family. And so we're believing God for this. Uh, Satan will try to discourage you, ladies and gentlemen. But we are overcomers. Jesus said we have already overcome by the word of the testimony and the blood of the Lamb. We're family, and we pray for one another, and we're believing God to meet everybody's needs. And so we thank God for this. Once again, we want to thank God that he has taken Israel off the dialysis program, and now his new kidneys uh, are working well. So we just thank God. We just praise God and bless God for what he's doing. Turn with me to um, page 330 in your workbook. Page 330, we're going to summarize the book of Revelation. Actually, when I first wrote this book, I wrote it for two lessons, uh, Revelation part A and Re Revelation part B. And the book of Revelation is actually divided into two sections, um, uh, chapters 1 through 12 or part a or the first section and from 13 until the end of the book is the second part of Revelation and once you get the the format of how this book is laid out you can uh, readily understand it better a lot of people have trouble with Revelation personally I don't get hung up on all the symbolism there's a whole lot of symbolism and when I discover that even the experts don't understand all of the symbolism, that took the weight off me. So I don't have to explain Revelation to anybody. Uh, I just teach it the way God gives it uh, because even the experts are not in agreement as to what all the symbols in this book represent. But uh, the book is written by John, the same author of the Gospel of John and the letters 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. This is John, the youngest of the disciples, whose mother was the mother, was the sister of Mary. So that makes him the, the cousin of Jesus. And it is believed that John was also somehow related to the high priest of Israel. And so this is the only disciple we believe that lived to be a long, uh, lived to a long life. It was, it's estimated that he died at the age of 120. He did not suffer a violent death like uh, the other disciples did. And in his old age, he was, a, he, was, he was a political prisoner on the Isle of Patmos. Now, Patmos was a small island um, in, in, uh, off, off Greece. And this island was about six miles long, wide by 10 miles long, six by 10, um, and 60 square miles. And it was flat, no trees on the island, just flat, dusty, and sandy. And it was where they, they had mines, sulfur mines. So uh, Lisa Cantrell Smith is talking about allergies in Oklahoma. Uh, Lisa, you would not have wanted to be on the Isle of Patmos with all that sulfur in your system. But that's where they put John along with um, the, the worst prisoners. The, the Roman government sentenced their worst prisoners on the Isle of Patmos to work in the sulfur mines. Can you imagine this old man uh, over 100 years old working in the salt mines as a political prisoner? And so we get his report, uh, God did not forget him, the Lord, and the Lord will not forget you. 
And no matter what you're going through, God will not forget you. You've committed your life to Jesus Christ. He will not forget you. So don't worry. Don't fret. Troubles will come. Every one of us is challenged. But we have put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Um, we're blessed because the scripture says, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. And respect not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. So John wrote this book around A.D. 95. The central message is the grand finale of the Bible story, or the Lord God omnipotent reigns, or the revelation of Jesus Christ. This is the last book of the Bible, uh, the word revelation comes from the Greek word apocalypse. And the word apocalypse means unveiling, like lifting the curtain off and letting one see what is there. And the way John wrote this book, um, um, God shows him the things that were, the things that are, and the things that shall be. And so when you look, when you study Revelation chapters 1, 2, and 3, I'll show you the things that are and the things that were. In chapter 4 of Revelation, Revelation, from 4 unto, actually 4 unto 12, from chapters 4 unto 12, actually from 4 until the end of the book, because chapter 13 uh, is 13 through 22, is a repeat in a different way of what happens between 4 and and 12. What John sees in chapters 4 to 12 is a repeat um, in chapters 13 through 22 from a different perspective as God reveals to him what will take place. Now, from chapter 1 to 3, John sees what took place and what was happening. And he gives a view, a world view of what was happening. All Israel. Israel was scattered. Uh, they had been scattered since 70 AD, and there was great persecution upon the Jews and greater persecution upon Christians. Anyone who followed after Jesus was targeted, including John. That is why in his three letters, uh, he sent one to Gaius, he sent one to the elect lady, which is probably a synonym for the church and the body of Christ. So John was John was a witness of the persecution. He lived through the persecution. He lived through the punishment and the vengeance that was uh, put out up, upon followers of Jesus Christ. But John was steadfast, unmovably, unmovable, and the Holy Ghost kept him. And the Holy Ghost will keep you and me. And so when we get to Revelation chapter 4, the Holy Spirit tells John, the angel of the Lord, speaking to John, says, come up hither. Come up hither. In other words, John, actually John, in this, in this, in this um, experience on the Isle of Patmos, he was actually raptured, ladies and gentlemen, raptured, caught up into the third heaven. John was raptured in this fourth chapter. And he sees all the things that you read about uh, from the fourth chapter on to the end of the book. So John was raptured, which was a, a um, just a little foretaste of the church being raptured uh, when the Lord comes back. So it's an exciting book. And once you understand the layout of it and the format of it, it makes it much easier for you to understand. So chapters 1 to 3. Are considered are, are basically historical history these things have taken place chapters 1 through 3 now in chapter 3 where 2 and 3 where you have the seven letters to the churches even though these are historical churches the the contents of the letters what the Lord said to these seven churches the contents are still relevant to the church today so do not let any, anyone confuse you those though these were real and historical churches the messages to them are still relevant to the church today okay so that's a little background of um of the history 
Okay, on four occasions in this letter, four occasions, the author identifies himself as John. John was so widely known that he did not need to establish his credentials. Early church, church tradition credits John with the writing of this book. Evidence within the book of Revelation indicates that the book was written during a time of extreme persecution of the church. This persecution was probably the one initiated by Emperor Nero uh, in 64 AD. In 64 AD, Nero had his servants set the city of Rome on fire, and he, and he, blamed, and he blamed the fire on Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, Nero was wacko. He was out there beyond the black hole. He was crazy. Nero set the city of Rome on fire and blamed it on Christians. Why? So that people could kill all the Christians. Thus Nero gave himself, gave himself the excuse for persecuting and killing the followers of Jesus Christ. Although Nero committed suicide in 68 AD, the persecutions against believers continued and many believers were martyred. Many believers were put to death because of their love for and allegiance to Jesus Christ. Okay, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the Old Testament, John undoubtedly had been reflecting on the horrifying events occurring both in Rome and Jerusalem when the Lord gave him the prophecies of this book. Okay, so this book is a disclosure, actually the, the apocalypse or the Greek word for revelation is a disclosure of that which was previously hidden or unknown. John wrote about the intensification of spiritual warfare that would take place against the church. He also wrote about anti-Christian states or governments as well as numerous anti-Christian religions that would come on the scene and challenge the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. One of the purposes of John's message was to encourage pastors of persecuted churches with strength and courage. The revelation proclaims the comforting and assuring Christian hope, along with the assurance that in Christ they were sharing in God's plan for the total overcoming of evil forces in all of evil's manifestations. In addition, the revelation is an evangelistic appeal to all who are presently living in the kingdom of darkness to enter the kingdom of light. It's a, an evangelistic appeal. Actually, when you get to um, chapters 13 through uh, 19, chapters 13 through 19, of Revelation. As you read this book, keep in mind the church will be in heaven with Jesus. From chapters 4 through 19, after chapter 3, uh, with, with, with Jesus gave, gives his orders to his uh, recommendations and his condemnation and his criticism and uh, recommendations to the seven churches. You don't hear about the church again until chapter 19. So between four, uh, the end of chapter three and chapter 19, no word about the church. Why? Because the church is raptured, removed from the face of the earth, removed and will return with Jesus during the millennium. So when you keep that in mind in reading this book, you can understand that the things that are going to happen on the earth are going to happen to those who refuse Jesus Christ. And in, in all of the events, God is remembering his promise to redeem and res rescue and restore Israel. So keep in mind that there, there will be great punishment of the enemies of Jesus Christ, all the nations all the people who refuse Jesus, who are left on the earth at the time of the rapture, God's going to work things out that he will fulfill his promise to uh, uh, rescue Israel. A remnant will be rescued and Israel will recognize Jesus as Savior and Lord and then 
Israel and the church will become um, um, the the new owners of uh, of the new earth that will be established. We will uh, we will we will co-inhabit uh, the earth, uh, worship worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. So that's the overall view. Okay, I've mentioned the the um, central message, the grand finale of the Bible story, or the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. I remember um, uh, Handel. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. I mean, when I used to sing in the choir. For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't want to. I don't want to go out there. I don't want to go out there. Uh, my, my my photo just fell off my desk, so I'll stop. I'll stop singing and get back to it. Okay, but. Um, the word apocalypse is a Greek compound word, apo, meaning away from, and kalupto means to hide or to cover. Okay, uh, so apocalypsis, or the word apoc apocalypse means <coughs> to unveil or to reveal. The book is organized in this way. John is told to write the things which he has seen, Revelation chapter 1. Write the things which are, Revelation 2 and 3. Write the things which shall be thereafter, Revelation 4 through 22. So John, John wrote to inform those who follow the Lamb of God that they will be involved in a continuous spiritual conflict with the enemy. John informs his readers and gives them deeper insights into the nature and tactics of the enemy. John lets the church know that the dragon, which is another name for Satan, frustrated by his defeat at the cross and desperate to thwart and hinder the purposes of God before his inevitable doom, will develop a counterfeit trinity to make war on the saints, the church. So John lets us know that the dragon, the Satan, who got his behind kicked on Calvary mm -hmm. and frustrated by his defeat at the cross, he's going to keep on trying to thwart the kingdom of God and keep people from entering into the kingdom. And he will even set up a counterfeit <clears throat> trinity, the beast and the false prophet and the devil, a counterfeit trinity to war against the church. Um, in his writing, John establishes the first beast or monster to symbolize the reality of anti-Christian government and political power. Every government is not going to love Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, as we live longer, governments are becoming more and more anti-Christ. Okay, um, in this society, people bear the mark of the beast, and their names are not reg registered in the Lamb's Book of Life. So the Antichrist will, will label people. He will brand them with his own mark. These will not be believers in Jesus Christ. These will be those who follow the beast. Okay? And so I hear people talking about uh, chips and, and, and uh, um, computer chips in people, skins, and this sort of thing as as uh, uh, precursors to the the the, uh, the government set up by the Antichrist. But ladies and gentlemen, we must keep our minds and our hearts on Jesus Christ, the Lord God, omnipotent God Almighty. Praise God. Revelation lets us know that beyond the pomp and circumstances of the world, there is a supreme God who assures the ultimate doom of evil. God will prevail, ladies and gentlemen. He's already won the victory. If you read to the end of the book, the, the end of, of the book lets us know that we have won. We win. So wherever you are in this life, no matter what's challenging you, no matter what comes against us, we know the end of this book. It declares to us that uh, we win. We have victory in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ will prevail. God sacrificed his only begotten son, the Lamb of God, so that we can all have eternal life. 
even though Satan tries with all of his might and all of his evil, he still cannot win. God has guaranteed the church the victory through Jesus Christ. And so this book of Revelation is also written to encourage the believers to hang in there. Don't give up. Don't cave in. Don't recant. Don't, don't denounce Jesus. And John lived in an age where political prisoners were oftentimes uh, given a choice. Either recant Jesus or denounce Jesus or die. And, and uh, some of John's friends, one of his best friends, Polycarp. Polycarp was burned at a stake. And, and uh, many others were burned, uh, put to death. Some were sawed in half inside of tree trunks. Some were uh, um, put in the arenas where the lions and the bears would tear them up. But praise God, they did not quit on Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I might have to go through great persecution but we cannot give up on Christ because Christ did not give up on us. He hung on the cross, he bled, and he died so that we can have eternal life. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise God. Followers of Jesus are not fighting a lost cause, no matter how difficult the situation might be. One of our students lost their job today, but that is not the end of the story. Praise God, that's not the end of the story. That just means you're getting a new job, man. You're, and when you listen to this tape tomorrow, you're just getting a new job. And when the job comes, you just give God the glory and the honor and the praise. He's just moving you out of one position to give you another position. Praise God. Jesus has already overcome the devil. and therefore. The followers of Jesus need to know that we can and we will overcome also. Praise God. So John received these prophecies contained in the Revelation through a vision from Jesus Christ while he was a prisoner on the Isle of Patmos. By the way, I, I, I hope that each of you uh, will take the next course, Introduction to the Prophetic. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're talking about how John received visions and the prophetic word. God has so many ways in which he gives a prophetic word to people. And so if you're able to take that course next semester, please do so. Um, we'll talk about, um, well, um, I don't know if we have time to talk about this tonight, but you can call me or Jackie and um on the phone or give us an email or, or a text message and I'll be, we'll be glad to talk to you about the next courses and uh, how we can help you, what is best for you uh, as we continue at, at, in, in the school. The next course we recommend is Introduction to the Prophetic. But if you want to take another course, please do so. We've got a line up and I will send you out another email tomorrow. We're going to tweak uh, the schedule for next semester. We're going to extend the um, um, sign up period for an additional week and start the next course on June 10 instead of June 3rd. June 10. That'll give people a uh, chance, some of you, to catch up on your, some, your homework, um, or, um, raise the funds for your next class, or work out some um, pattern with Heidi. But we give you an extra week and start the new semester on. June 10th. We'll be ready to roll on June 10th. By the way, introduction to the prophetic, we will meet on Thursday nights uh, for the uh, weekly online class and that particular course. We will not meet with uh, Gifted to Succeed and Experiencing God in the small group on a weekly basis, but I will have um, a Saturday seminar for each of those courses, a Saturday seminar, a four-hour seminar once one four hour seminar at a particular Saturday for each of those courses and um, the seminars will help you. Okay, praise God. So John said he was in the spirit of the Lord on the Lord's day. I was in the spirit, um, chapter 1, 10 to 11. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am. Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, 
and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Praise God. So John received a revelation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this book of Revelation is a, a perfect example of journaling. Many of you have taken the course communion with God, journaling. You hear from God and you write what he gives you. Habakkuk did the same thing. So did Daniel. So did Ezekiel. So did Isaiah. So did Paul. What God gave, they wrote. This book, Revelation, is an example of journaling. God spoke it. John didn't understand it all, but he wrote it. Okay? And the Holy Ghost gets the results. It must be recorded that John, it must be noted that John recorded the visions that the Lord gave him in chronological order. He recorded them in chronological order, although the visions did not occur in that particular order. John teaches us that God will pour out his wrath in judgment upon Satan, his allies, and the spiritually dead, all those who have chosen to reject Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, all persons historically and presently and in the future who will reject Jesus Christ will be destroyed. That is why, that is why we, we have so much work to do, ladies and gentlemen. We must be witnesses for Jesus. We must seize every opportunity that we get to tell people about the love of God for them. There is no one on the face of this earth who is beyond salvation unless they deliberately and purposely reject Jesus Christ. We've got to share the witness, share the testimony, even if you don't like them. Try to love them. you got to love them anyhow. Even if people get on your last nerve, you still, still have to love them and pray for them. Uh, remember, Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And he died for all mankind. So no matter what people are doing, there is hope. Don't ever give up on anyone because the Lord did not give up on us. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. If I was preaching, I'd say, I don't know about you, but I know about me. He, God has put up with a whole lot of stuff. And I praise God. I have not arrived, but I'm so glad. Uh, uh, he's brought me from a mighty long way. And he's brought us from a mighty long way. We may not be where we ought to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness from somebody in the chat window? Witness? Praise God. So in obedience, John wrote the things that the Lord said to him. Then in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, write the things which are. And so this is where um, John sees the seven candlesticks, which represent the seven churches and the, um, the seven lampstands. And um, that's symbolic, uh, representing the seven churches, rep then the candle representing the, the pastors of the churches and um, the angels of the church. The angel is a word meaning the pastors of the churches. So messages were given to the pastors of the churches. Some churches were told to clean up your act. One church was said, you're not hot and you're not cold. You need to make a choice, get hot or get cold. Right now you're lukewarm. I mean, you're just sitting up there taking notes. Uh, uh, you, you, you come to church on Sunday, you sit up there look, taking notes, you look good and all that, but there's no fruit in your life. Um, uh, Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. And so John gives instructions from the Lord. And the sequence is this. God spoke to Jesus. Jesus spoke to the angel. The angel spoke to John. And John journaled and wrote the book of Revelation. Okay, the church of Ephesus. Um, in this church, Jesus did not condemn this church. But he said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. You have left your first love. And this, this um, was a word for that historical church, and it's a word for us. This word is living. God wants us to return to our first love. Many of us 
came to Jesus on fire when we got saved. And and then uh, uh, we let the, the 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 challenges of the world, the, the lust of the world, uh, steal us away from Jesus. But the Lord says to every one of us, return to your first love. And then when we return to our first love, we will do the first works. So if you're off track, and I've been off track many times, uh, the Lord's word is powerful. Return to your first love. What's that mean? Just repent and say, Lord, forgive me. I am not loving you the way I should. Help me, Holy Spirit, to love God the way I should. And forgive me. I repent and then just go about loving the Lord. Let the Lord be preeminent, as Colossians says. Let him have first place in your life. Um, Jesus takes preeminence over, over your wife, husband. And over your husband, wife, uh, Jesus takes preeminence over your children, uh, over your grandchildren. Jesus takes preeminence over your job, over your finances. Jesus must be first in our lives, and he wants us to do the first works. Those are the works he's called us to do in obeying him. Jesus challenged this church. He said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So, so the Lord told Ephesus, the Ephesian church, and these were the churches in Ephesus. So the, those churches read this letter. They made the necessary corrections, and God blessed that church. The church of Smyrna was a church that was undergoing persecution. Satan designs persecution to get us to, to doubt God, to get us into unbelief, to get us to leave God, to stop being allegiant to him. In the church of Smyrna, this was the church of the martyrs and the persecution. On ten different occasions, the imperial rulers tried to crush this church. And Jesus did not condemn this church. He says, I know your works, your tribulation and poverty. He says, but you're rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. In this church, there was a group of people. Jesus called them the synagogue of Satan. In other words, you had, had, you had Satan's followers in the church in leadership position. Uh-oh. And, and, and the Lord had to deal with them. Correct this, he said. He said to them, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days, but be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give you the crown of life. Next, the church of Pergamos, or Pergamon. It was a worldly church. This church, ladies and gentlemen, was married to the state. Now listen carefully. We have churches in America that are married to the state. That's where all the government officials go. Okay? And 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 whoever is who in the political realm, they go there. And um, um and and the preachers preach a, a kind of message to appease them, to stroke them. Uh that this is nothing new. The church of Pergamos. Jesus condemned this church. In Revelation 2, 14 and 15, he warned the church, he said, Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He challenged this church, he said, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna and give him a white stone. And a white stone is symbolic of the, the, the reward that a man or a woman would receive uh, in, in the Olympic Games, the winners were given a white stone as opposed to a different colored stone. The white stone meant that you were the victor in the games, and it also meant that for the rest of your life, the state, the taxpayers, had the responsibility to keep you living in luxury. So if you're an athlete uh, today, uh, uh, athletes back in those days, the first century, A.D., uh, in those Olympic Games, those athletes, if they were awarded the, a white stone, they were taken good care of by the government and by the people for the rest of their lives. Incidentally, in the 
in the uh, court system, the judges handed out white stones and black stones. If a judge overheard a person's case and uh, gave the person a white stone, that meant that person was exonerated, set free. But if, if the judge gave that person a black stone, that means your behind was going, I'm sorry, your rear end was going to jail or else would be put to death. <laughs> okay. The white stone represented um, rewards and the black stone represented punishment and even death. The church of Thyatira. By the way, when you read the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, do not be afraid of each syllable. Pronounce each syllable. Pronounce each syllable. Now, there are some words that the syllables are tricky because um, in the Greek language, they had the use of words that had diphthongs, D-I-T-H-D-I-P-H-T-H-O-N-G-S, diphthongs. Diphthongs were combinations of A-E-O-U, A-O-U, E-A-U, and, and sometimes those combinations of the vowels would throw the pronunciation off. But um, in every case, when you're reading the Bible, pronounce every syllable. Take your time, and you can you can conquer any word in the Bible. Uh, Leomer Kizar, or whatever that man's name was, Nebuchadnezzar, and all those long words. You just take them by syllables, one syllable at a time. The Church of Thyatira was uh, just like the church at, Thir at Pergamos. It was a government-controlled church. It was a worldly church. Uh, the government controlled it. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot of government-controlled churches. And the government would love to control a lot of churches. That is why we must be true to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not compromise. Uh, Many have compromised, and um, um, the reason why this nation was founded, America was discovered, what, not discovered, was founded, was settled, because the pilgrims and the, the Puritans wanted to uh, get away from the government-controlled churches in Europe, because the government-controlled churches uh, put, put um, limitations on worship. And so in, in our country, in our nation, our, our, our constitution, we, we, are, we are guaranteed freedom of religion. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that in itself has been taken uh, to the maximum limit, limits of the black hole, freedom of religion. Uh, the, the, the liberals, uh, the, the uh, interpretationists have taken that, and, and, and now you can worship freely you can worship cats and dogs you can worship trees bricks and mortar you can worship uh snakes snails puppy dog tails you can worship anything you want to in this nation because of the the loose interpretation of the constitution but it was not intended that way the founders those people who fled persecution in europe fled uh, uh the government putting them to death because they wanted to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, this nation was not founded because somebody wanted to worship Allah or Buddha or, 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 or Baha'u'llah or the Hindu gods. This nation was not founded. But now, ladies and gentlemen, the government protects people to worship any kind of religion and any kind of God. But, but this nation needs to repent, and the leaders need to repent, and the Supreme Court needs to repent, and the justices need to repent. Because when this nation was founded, this nation was founded so that people can worship the Lord Jesus Christ in freedom. I'm going to repeat this. This nation, the United States of America, before it became the United States, before there were 13 colonies, the, the original colonists founded this nation so that they can have the freedom to worship the Lord Jesus Christ without government interference. This nation was not founded so that you can build mosques and temples to Allah 
or, or build Hindu temples or Buddhist temples. Yes, I'm preaching it because it's the truth anyhow. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So Jesus in this church of Thyatira, even though it was a government led church, he commended the church, commended them in verse 19. He says, I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. But he condemned them in verses 20 to 23 of chapter 2. They were let, allowing a false prophetess named Jezebel to guide them. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this was not the Jezebel who was married to King Ahab back in 1 Kings. This was not that Jezebel. This was another Jezebel. Uh, she practiced witchcraft. Uh, this is the first century church in Thyatira where they had uh, the prophetess Jezebel was the leader of the church and she promoted uh, sexual uh, immorality in the church and, and lesbianism and, 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 and the gay lifestyle and, and all kinds of evil took place in this church under the leadership of this woman named Jezebel and Jesus com condemned this church for allowing a false prophetess to lead them. He challenged this church and said, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And we uh, need the people in, in this nation and in the nations to stand up for righteousness and holiness and morality. Ladies and gentlemen, there are churches where uh, uh, the pastor is, is, is a lesbian. And, and and the first lady is a lesbian. There are churches in this nation, ladies and gentlemen, where the pastor is a homosexual. And the first lady is a homosexual man. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not going to honor that, no matter how much the government supports it. And the government and the ACLU and, and the legal system will 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 shoot you down for for criticizing those churches but as preachers of the gospel we've got to tell it the way it is come on somebody amen the next church is the church and now y'all said pastor carter you stirring up trouble well that's just the way it is ladies and gentlemen either you're uh, for jesus or you're against him you're either for me or against me jesus is saying the church at sardis was the church of reformation reformation um Jesus condemned this church. He said, you have a name that you are alive, but you're dead. It reminds me when I used to live in Philly. And there were churches, they called themselves Holy Ghost Headquarters. Some pastors would brag and boast on their churches. Well, you all need to come on the Holy Ghost Headquarters where we really know how to have church. Yeah, that's what they did. They knew how to have church. They called themselves Holy Ghost Headquarters. But the Holy Ghost was not in a lot of that mess, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'll be afraid. I'll be afraid to to blaspheme the Holy Spirit and 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 put that kind of label on the Holy Spirit. I mean, I had friends in seminary who boasted on their churches, called their churches Holy Ghost headquarters. Why? Because they had a good singing choir, or or the preacher could preach. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Ghost headquarters is in the temple of every believer. That's Holy Ghost headquarters. The Holy Spirit, He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He rules the whole world, but yet he lives inside of every believer. Um, I, I want to invite you after this course is over, join me on Sunday mornings if you can. I'm going to, I'm doing a multi-week uh, 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 presentation on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this week we're, we're continuing with the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to take each of the gifts of the Spirit and minister on them each Sunday. This week is gift of knowledge. I might combine it with the gift of wisdom, but we're going to take all the gifts. We want to take a good look at the Holy Spirit, how he operates, how he wants to live in us, how he wants to use us, what who the Holy Spirit really is. And, and, and many people are not being taught about the Holy Spirit, but God's going to give us some good revelation knowledge. 
Okay, so the church at Sardis, they had a reputation. They were had a reputation. They were an on fire, man. We're 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 burning for Jesus, man. Our church is on fire, man. This is Holy Ghost headquarters. Man, come here. We got the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, you can get the Holy Ghost right in your living room, right in your den, right at your computer. You can get the Holy Ghost right now. Uh it, by receiving Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. The moment you accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, you have the Holy Ghost living inside of you. Then, as an added bonus, Ephesians 5, 18 says, Be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, Holy Ghost headquarters is you. It's you, believer. It's you. Holy Ghost headquarters is you. Praise God. Just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. He dwells dwells in every believer so praise god i mean don't let the world confuse you don't let worldly churches confuse you don't let ignorant christians confuse you read the bible the scripture the scripture proves itself ladies and gentlemen jesus said i got something about you you have a reputation that you're alive everybody thinks you're an on fire church but you're dead he says you're dead he said you have a name that you live and you're dead but he says, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. And I will confess uh, that be, be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. For I have not, I have not found your works perfect before God. Man, Jackie, where has the time gone? Where has the time gone? You didn't come in here with any notes saying 10 more minutes. Man, time is gone. The church at Philadelphia, it represents the open door or the great missionary movement. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there have been Bible scholars who have tried to attach a time period, a historical time period with each of these churches. And in that vein, they say that the church of Philadelphia is a modern day church uh, because of the great missionary movement. No, the church at Philadelphia was a historical church but the truth that jesus said to them apply to us he that overcometh will i make a pillar in the temple of my god and he shall go out no more i will write upon him the name of my god and the name of the city of my god which is new jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my god and i will write upon them my new name the church at Laodicea, okay, this church, Jesus warned them. This church was rich. The members of the church, this church were filthy rich. They had discovered, they had crossbred sheep and came up with this black wool, this black velvety wool, ladies and gentlemen, and people all over the world wanted that wool, and they would come to Laodicea, the merchants, to purchase that wool. And so the members of this church who happened to be the businessmen of Laodicea, they were filthy rich. I mean, they were so rich. And they also, in addition to, to discovering how to crossbreed sheep uh, to make black sheep with black velvety wool, they discovered an eye salve, an eye balm, an eye ointment. And when you put that ointment on people's eyes, blind eyes came back to see again so the people at laodicea they were they were gifted but they didn't give the glory and honor to god so jesus said as many as i love i rebuke and chasten he says i know your works that you're neither hot nor cold he said i would that thou were cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Even though they had all that money, Jesus said, you're, you're poor. Even though they had all that black wool, you're, you're naked. Even though they had that eye salve, you're blind. So Jesus um reprimanded that church then he said behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door i will come into him and will sup with him and he with me to him that overcometh will i grant 
to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. So that's the churches of Asia Minor. Historical churches, but the messages are still true and strong today. And so for the rest of Revelation, ladies and gentlemen, John is caught up in a rapture. And he's taken by the Holy Spirit up into heaven where the Lord reveals to him many things. We will not have time to finish these tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And our time's running out. But he sees seals open. He sees war. He sees pestilence. He sees death. He sees um, actually the battle of Armageddon. John sees uh, an angel standing in the sun. I mean, he's looking at the sun. He sees an angel standing in the sun. And the angels are beckoning all the birds of the world to fly over the plains of Megiddo to eat the bodies of the enemies of Israel who will be defeated by the Lord Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an awesome thing that will happen but the church, we will not be witnesses of this. We will be raptured into heaven. The rapture will take place. And those who deny Jesus will remain on the earth. And God, and then, and in their denial of Jesus, they will assemble themselves. The nations will assemble themselves to attack Israel. One more thrust against Israel. To wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Satan's plan. And it's, I wrote about this in, in my book called The Giants Are Back. Satan's plan is to destroy Israel. To destroy the church. But God made a plan. A promise to Israel. And when Israel denied <clears throat> Jesus as the son of God. And the Messiah. God extended his grace and mercy to the Gentiles. That is how the church came into existence but God is not a man that he should lie he will rescue Israel from the the combined armies of the world that will meet uh, and try to defeat Israel in fact in one day ladies and gentlemen one day 80 percent of the millions of soldiers that will come against Israel will be wiped out in one day ladies and gentlemen as God reveals his mighty hand, as Jesus rides on a white horse and leads the army of angels to attack the enemies of Israel and the church, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. We will be in the air with him as he cracks through the sky uh, uh, on this return. He will return to the earth to rescue Israel and the church will be right there with him. Uh, giving praise and glory and honor to God and welcome our Jewish brothers and sisters uh, who will be rescued, whose eyes will be opened and where they will declare Jesus to be Lord of Lords and King of Kings and together with us, with the church, the rescued Jews, uh, uh, the Messianic Jews, we will uh, be together with God. And then John said, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth the old heaven and the old earth were destroyed and then um the believers will be placed on the new earth to rule co-rule with jesus satan will be locked in a bottomless pit for a thousand years after a season he'll be released just for a little while to do his due but then he will be crushed, crushed, ladies and gentlemen, and then cast into the lake of fire where Satan will burn forever and ever and ever. The beast and the false prophet will already be in that lake of fire and all uh, the devils, uh, uh, demon, demonic spirits will be cast into the lake of fire and all who deny Jesus Christ in life will be cast into the lake of fire. It's a grand finale, ladies and gentlemen, a grand finale. And so um, that's 
the best that we can do with Revelation. Okay, there's a lot of symbolism, and uh, but don't get hung up on the symbolism. Just trust God. And here's something you learned from your first course, communion with God. If you don't know and you want to know, ask God. And God will reveal to you the things he wants to reveal to you. But you have, as a child of God, washed in the blood of the Lamb, you can go to God with your questions and trust him to answer you. We learned that from Habakkuk. We learned that from John. We learned that from Paul. We learned that from David and so many others. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Uh, that's about it for uh, this particular course. Your last assignment is to write a two to three page report. You can write a two page report if you want to. You can write a one and a half page report with 20 point font if you want to. <laughs> Just write a nice report and include how this class helped you, how we can improve it, uh, how it blessed you, and uh, any, any, any critique you have, we welcome your critique. Um, but mostly we wanna know how has this course bless me and then we sure would like for you to send a testimony uh to heidi begley and paul begley uh give them your take on the course and and um encourage others encourage others to take this course pray for this school this paul begley school of prophecy is a life changing school and i thank god for it well bless god before uh, we ask any ask for questions and take a couple minutes for Q&A. Jackie, is there anything we forgot tonight, sweetheart? Um, I don't think so. Um, I hear you in the next room, but I can't hear you through the mic. I don't think so. I'm just kind of like everybody else. I'm kind of hating that this is our final class, but um, I know that We'll all take a break, but we'll continue to be in touch. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jackie. And uh, for, for our individual class members, if you want to call us at any time, please do so. Um, I'll send you out an email tomorrow. And homework is due. Zizla, the homework is due for the last course, last homework assignment, anytime. I'd like to have it within the next week. I'd like to have all, all homework by next week and uh, so we can finalize your grade and get you ready for your next course. But if you need to talk with us, give us a call. Um, our number is 770-559-9710. Um, Jackie will put that in the chat window, I believe. Would you please, dear? 770-559-9710. Uh, uh, my cell is 404-205-1101, and you can email either of us. We'll be so glad to share with you. Okay, praise God. Thank you. And now, any questions, any comments from anybody? Bless you, Bryce. We love you too, man. We'll give you a call sometime soon. Bless you, sister. Tell uh, Israel we're praying for him and we're excited about what God's doing in his life. We love you too, Christina. Can't wait to see you in the next class. By the way, if you are if you don't know how you're going to pay for it, I would say go ahead and enroll anyhow. Enroll in the next course. We're believing God for miracle money for anybody who needs it. And as soon as you can sign up, we can get a, a fix on how many textbooks we need to send out for the next class. So if you can do that within the next week, please sign up within the next week. Okay, we have a commitment from one of your classmates who will help uh, with paying for a class or bills, whoever has a need, praise God. That's that's wonderful. Christine, I will 
I'll contact you tomorrow because we do have one who uh, has a need. But if anyone else has a need, let us know. Let us know. We'll work something out with Paul and Heidi. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, even if you've enrolled and haven't paid for your books yet, that's fine. That's fine. We're going to, that's fine. We'll work that out. Any other questions? Any other comments? Well, all good things must come to an end. So we'll take a little break and um, we'll see you all in the next course. But, and I, uh, for, for those who may not go on to another course, Jackie and I, we're here to help you anytime you need us. You feel free. Get in touch uh, with us. May God bless you and keep you and draw nearer to God, everybody. God is your source. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And uh, we love you. Good night, everybody.